What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Independent Raw Beatbox.com. It's the first time I ever did a vlog in a car. So I can't look out the camera here. I said I gotta look out the road because I'm on the road. I'm on the highway. Anyway, question of the day Is Brooklyn Nets fans delusional or are they just stupid? Now, for the for the record. I say it on all my blogs, all my podcasts, everything I do, that I'm a Brooklyn Net fan. But I'm an angry Brooklyn Net fan. And here's why. We had the worst record in the league last year. 20 wins. We had to swap our first round draft pick, which ultimately turned out to be the number one draft pick to the Boston Celtics, thanks to Billy King. And next season, we just got to outright just give our number one draft pick to the Boston Celtics. I mean, we don't even have a first round draft pick. And when free agency opened up, being the fact that the Nets have close to $30 million in uh, they have close to $30 million in, in, in uh, cap room, I think the exact number is like 28 and change. I'm expecting the Nets to make a splash. So what happens after, what's this, four days into free agency? Nothing. The Brooklyn Nets have done nothing. Not one person. Only thing I've heard reports about is that they were supposed to have a sit down with Otto Porter. That's it. Now, we have to sit there and we have to look at it like this. There's a lot of free agents out there that could help this team. And I've come to the healthy conclusion that the Nets is doing nothing because the GM, Sean Marks, he's not interested in nothing else outside of saving his organization money. That's it. I heard that he's looking for, quote unquote, salary dumps. What the hell is a salary dump? A salary dump is you wait. So this is what else. Back up. Let me back up. So when I hear that. What comes to mind is this. You're waiting for all the free agents to be snatched up off the market. And then after all the free agents are snapped up, snatched up off the market, you're going to look at the go at the teams who are over the salary cap and say, hey, do you want to get rid of some of your players? And yes, some of these teams will to get under the uh, cap or get close to the cap, especially for those who was over the salary cap last season which makes them a repeat offender and they'll have to pay more than a dollar for dollar salary caps. So I get that. But think about it. No teams will want to give you their best players. They're not even trying to give you their second tier players. I've, I've heard a report that the uh, uh, Toronto Raptors may be interested in shutting the Mar Carroll $30 million uh, Sound, uh, his $30 million that he's owed. Who the hell wants the Mark Harrell? So in other words, all the teams that's looking for salary dumps, what they're really looking for is to get players off their, off their roster who didn't pan out. Players who was underachievers. Toronto wouldn't have paid DeMar, DeMar Carroll, not DeRosa, all that money if they knew he was going to play the way he was playing. And now that uh, P.J. Tucker left Toronto, <coughs> excuse me, and he's with, um, who he's with? He's with Houston, they may not even want him. But even if they do want him, don't want him. I mean, they may want him, but even if they don't want him, I don't want him in no Brooklyn Net uniform. What the hell is DeMar Carroll going to do, especially at $15 million a season? Are you kidding me? If that's the case... You might as well go back and get Mason Plumley. He's a restricted free agent. You could go, uh, which I'm quite sure that Denver is not willing to pay top dollar for Mason Plumley. He's young, athletic. Uh, I'll take Bionifis back. He's not the best at the right price. Let's be clear. I'll take Bionifis back at the right price. Bionifis is not the best defender, but he can put he can shoot the rock. Uh, he is sober. He's out there. 
I wouldn't mind having Ian Shoba. So there's players out there that the Nets can be going for, and right now they're just sitting on their hands doing nothing. Are we really sitting here on the contingency waiting on Otto Porter? Uh, George is out there. Uh, George Hill, he's out there. How does that work with you already having Jeremy Lin and DeAndre, uh, what's his name, D'Angelo Russell? How does that work if you was to get George Hill? Me, I said Jeremy Lin asked on the bench. Point blank. He was hurt all last season anyway. Well, you won't get a chance to be hurt this season. I'm just pissed off, man. And I'm pissed off more with the fans than I am with the organization. Because let me break this down to y'all. A fan base dictates a lot to what an organization does. And here's the reason why. If you have a fan base that puts no pressure on the organization, the organization has has. They will not feel, depending on the organization, a lot of organizations will not feel obligated to make moves. You have a fan base like the Brooklyn Nets, and these guys been going at me on Twitter, just killing me on Twitter back and forth, doing my um my people addicts Twitter page, and they've been going at me like crazy. This fan base, they've been going at me like crazy because here's their philosophy: you have to wait. We're we are rebuilding. How long are we going to go through this? You tell you, how the hell do you say we're rebuilding? But they're taking money now, fools. It costs us money now to go to a net game. It costs us money to buy any net jersey. They're taking money now. So how the hell, or what occupation, what's, what, what occupation, what form of life can you have something that takes money now and say, We'll get better later. Have you ever went to a restaurant and the food is terrible? And they can see, do you let the guy come out and say, "Well, we're we had a new cook and he's just learning." And you say, "Okay, well, we'll just continue to come in the restaurant and patronize this restaurant until the guy becomes uh, eventually becomes a good cook." Hell no! What do you do? You stop going to that restaurant. Am I correct? So why, when it comes to sports? You guys can just accept the fact that we're trash and we're going to be trash for the next couple years. Like I said, we don't have a 2018 draft pick. We got to give that to Boston. Common sense will say, if I just gave up the V number one draft pick, I don't want to do that two years in a row. So I need to bring some players in that can help me win now. Hell with all that rebuilding. I need players that can help me win now. So that way, if I have to give up my number one draft pick, especially in the East. A couple players, a couple good players on your team can get you into the playoffs. Let's look at the teams. You got Indiana, who I don't think is going to make it to the uh, to, to playoffs. You got uh, who else? Who else? Uh, Indiana. Da, 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 da. Oh, man. It's a couple teams that's, that made it to the playoffs. Oh, you got Indiana, and you got Atlanta Hawks. Those are two teams that's prime, the Chicago Bulls. That's the third team. Those are the three teams that's primed to not make the playoffs. Those are three teams that can easily, you can easily get that spot if you bring in a couple good players and you add it to the core people. So that way, when you give up your number one draft pick, you're not giving up a lottery pick again. I'm just extremely pissed off. And like I said, the fan base. I, you have to blame this on the Nets fan base because if you accept anything, and this is not just sports, this go all through life. If you accept anything in life, you will get anything in life. And with that, I'm Independent Raw from bballaddicts.com. Please subscribe, and I'm out.